New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art is one of the world's premier museums with tens of thousands of objects out of its permanent collection of 1.5 million on display at any given time. So trying to see the whole museum in just one day is sheer madness, right? Well, maybe not. Here to tell us how he did it is WSJ contributor James Pinero. James, welcome. Thank you. So great to have you. So you say you've loved the Met since you were a child. You've been several times through the course of your life. What inspired you to do it all in one day? Well, I have to say this was a fun assignment that began as a treat to myself. I was celebrating a birthday and wondered what I wanted to do to market. Should I um, go out and see the world? Should I turn back time? Should I take part in a physical challenge? I said I can do all three at once. I'll go to the Met and I'll try to see every gallery in one day. So did you plan your itinerary very carefully? Not so carefully, no. actually. Um, the Met makes it easy to do this in a certain way. It's a low barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. You go upstairs, you take a museum map, and I made a right for Egypt, and that's where I began. Every room is numbered. So in fact, on my map, I just checked off every room as I went along, and 400 plus rooms later, I was done. And we should mention, though, it's best to try this on a Friday when the museum is open from <laughs> 10 to 6, correct? Yeah, you know, I hadn't <laughs> thought about it, but it was because I, it took me longer than the normal time. It right. took me about seven hours. To get through uh, everything. To get through everything. According to my pedometer on my phone, I walked 20,000 paces, and it was about 10 miles. Amazing. So again, you started with Egypt, yeah. correct? That's and right. And then you spent all morning there till lunch, or how it, did it You know, I, I tried. I, I, I divided it up. I said, I'll do the first floor, and then I'll do the second floor. Right. Um, you kind of crisscross through every period, uh, through every location. Uh, and it was at around lunchtime that I then made my way upstairs okay. to the second floor. And you did have lunch at the Met, I'm assuming. You, you know, I'm there to enjoy myself, yeah, right? right? So I had lunch <laughs> with my wife at the, in the Petrie Court Cafe. That's wonderful. So then after lunch, what was the first thing you hit? The, the Robert Lehman Collection? So Robert Lehman Collection to the American Wing, which is personally my favorite, yes. and in particular the period rooms. Yeah. And I will say this was such an interesting exercise for me because I've been to the Met hundreds of times. I mean, we, we all have been there so many times. We think we know it, we really don't know it. There were so many rooms I'd never seen. And it was the small works of art, the, the, the objects of culture that really struck my eye when I wasn't directed towards a single room or a single painting or a single exhibition. You were allowed to just to, to just, wander, as just it were. Just to wander, exactly. These, these gold um, sandals from Egypt caught my eye. Um, snuff bottles from China caught my eye. And these rooms, no one's in them. So oh, that's why fabulous. it's just so wonderful you get lost in it. And then looking at your watch, roughly what time did you hit the second floor and what delayed your ascent? Well, this is actually noteworthy because it was about 2.30 when I finally stepped up going to the second floor. I didn't reach the second floor till about 3 p.m. because in the American Wing, there are so many half floors of period rooms that take up I mean, all your concentration and fascination, and something called the visible storage, the loose visible storage. And I recommend anyone who goes to the Met take a look at this space. The Met, over the years, has taken things out of the basement and put it into containers in this space. You can just walk down and see tens of thousands of objects that would otherwise be in the basement. Oh, how fascinating. Yeah, my, and my daughter loves it especially. Oh, that is, sounds fantastic. But here you are on the second floor, which is arguably the most famous part of the Met, and it's already 3 o'clock. Were you getting nervous at this point? Yeah, I was starting to get a little nervous <laughs> because I, I figured that's about halfway for right. me. Um, and you have the Asian art, the European art. Yeah, got, yeah, I mean, those are the more famous rooms, really. It's, I mean, it's a European painting collection, and it's Asian art. Art. I mean, these are the rooms that people tend to go to. I, honestly, I, I, maybe I got delayed on the first floor. I just loved all those period rooms down there. Absolutely. So then how did you finish off your tour? Well, it did kind of work out that it was slightly chronological. So if you start with Egypt and you kind of make your way back and forth, you go upstairs, and then I went down out the modern contemporary wing. So I finished with a, actually another fame favorite painting, Thomas Hart Benton's America Today, which is a recent acquisition at the Met, and just a really dynamic set of murals. And you reached that right at 6 o'clock. It was, yeah. <laughs> Pretty I mean, close. Like the, room, the, the rooms were starting to close. I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, boy. You, know. <laughs> you did it. Were I you, did it. Were you tempted to slide under the bed like the characters in the mixed-up files of Miss Basil Frank Weiler oh, and just stay overnight? <laughs> that's what's so good about that museum. Unlike any other museum, you just get lost in it, and it's a home yeah. away from home. That's so true. Well, you have inspired me. I'm going to give this a try myself. James Panero, thank Thank you so much for that. Thanks for having me.